And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. And welcome to the After Action Review podcast. I'm your host, Rod Rodriguez. And this is episode 25 with Brad Clark of Via Artisans. Uh, this is a really special episode for me because uh, I've, I've had the privilege of having worked with some amazing people. One of the first jobs I got out of the Army was with a company called The Previous Group, where I worked as a consultant. And it was there that I met a bunch of other veterans, undoubtedly some of the most talented and some of the smartest people I've ever worked with. But it was also funny, it was also kind of strange and funny because everybody that came from that group, when uh, when the company you know, it downsized, that's a really nice way of saying it, and we all had to go our own separate ways, so many of us went into entrepreneurship. So Jamie Godori, he's been on the show, a marriage family counselor, a Christian counselor, doing his own thing, has his own focus, his own business that he's doing. Mike Allred, he was the first guest on the After Action Review podcast. You know, this is the guy that that sat through five takes, five hours of trying to get this, this show done with me for the first episode. The guy owns a sick fit gym in uh, Round Rock, Texas, uh, an amazing gym. I've always said it's the Apple store of uh, fitness. And now, Brad Clark. And Brad, I always knew Brad was very talented because I remember he made his own standing workstation, you know, this beautiful, beautiful desk, uh, handmade. And he's taken this from hobby to business. One of the cool things about Brad is how absolutely down to earth this guy is. Right away, I, I promise you're gonna, you're gonna get that home, that, that small town, uh, feel and he's a genuine person he is literally what you see is what you get honest to the core i wasn't surprised to see the level of professionalism and absolute beauty that is in their website the via artisans website is <laughs> it's gorgeous and their blogs are fantastic look I never thought, and I'm not, I'm not BSing in you because I'm trying to promote his his business. I genuinely believe in what they're doing. Their blog about cutting boards, freaking cutting board. I know what you're thinking. It's a cutting board, dude. Big, what's the big whoop? Go read their blog. Go find out about cutting boards and tell me that was the most interesting blog, the most interesting article you've ever read about cutting boards. I started thinking about my own cutting board at home. I, I need a nice cutting board. Like, you know, the idea that, you know, you buy a cutting board to last you not just your lifetime, but something to pass on to your children. Think about that. Your kids' kids could be using a cutting board their great-grandma was using. You know, generations of meals prepared on the same cutting. That's that's cool, man. That's really cool. So anyways, without further ado, episode 25, which is really cool because this is our 25th episode. So I'm so glad to have a, uh, a, a true uh, friend and uh, former colleague uh, a, a wonderful guy, Brad Clark, via Artisans. My name's Brad Clark. I uh, live here in Central Texas. We live in a little town. Well, I say little. It used to be little. It's not so little anymore, but we're uh, in Belton, Texas, about 45 minutes north of Austin. So this is where uh, my wife and I grew up, and we moved back here about, uh, I guess, about five, six years ago. Went to college, joined the Army. Took a commission, um, went immediately on to active duty. So uh, my civilian job suffered uh, early on in my career. And that caught up to me, you know, four or five years later when I came off active duty. And um, the peer group that I had started uh, at the Department of Agriculture with were four and five years ahead of me. So what I found was after I came off active duty for that second deployment, um, you know, I was, I was frustrated at work because I had just accomplished all these, you know, these grand, I've been on this grand adventure uh, around the world. And here I am back at home and, uh, you know, I didn't feel like I had any control. I felt like I was behind the power curve. And that's, you know, something that's other people on your show have talked about. And it's a pretty common veteran um, experience. So, um, at that point, the story, enter the story, um, guy named Nate Self. So a chance encounter with him led to um, an opportunity to come work a company called The Previous Group, which I know you've talked about with your audience. And, of course, is how me and uh, you and I met. 
So that's what brought us back here to this area. So around the world a couple times and back to Belton, Texas, central Texas area. And so um, that brought us back to our family, back to our roots. Um, at that point, we decided, you know, let's start a family. Let's, uh, let's try to make this kind of a more permanent thing. So we started getting a little bit more involved in the community, um, finished up school, um, was working a, a, a new job, relatively new job in, uh, in logistics, doing logistics planning. And, um, you know, my wife and I started just talking, you know, maybe you could start focusing more on building some things, uh, for other people. You know, my father, my father was a mechanic by trade. He was auto auto technician and he was very good at it. And so I grew up in the shadow, if you will, of a master craftsman because he, he was, uh, you know, a master technician at his job by day. And then in the evenings he would come home. And I would watch him build things in 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 the garage, or as in our family we call it the shop. And I would watch him, you know, build these pieces of furniture. I I watched him build cabinets for you know a, a whole set of cabinets for a kitchen, redo bathrooms. Um, and my whole life I watched him build things for people and for for us. You know, most of the stuff in our home uh, was built by him. And so I, I kind of grew up with the idea of, you know, if you need something built or you want something, you just build it yourself. And if you don't know how to build it, then you figure out how to do it. And so my dad is, you know, you know, handyman doesn't even begin to describe what he is. He, he just, he's the kind of person that's got the, the discipline and the patience and the, the talent to pick up something, um, and, and create something out of nothing. And so I picked up a little bit of that on the way. Um, and when I came home from Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, you know, I was starting to get to the point in my life where I was, I owned a home. I wanted to build some things, um, for our home. And so I started collecting tools and getting back into the woodworking. I had to reteach myself a whole new way to do woodworking because I, I hadn't done it since I had left home. And so I had to take and rely on everything that my father had taught me growing up and that I had, had watched him do and then come up with my own approach to woodworking and how I like to build things, the things that I like to build. Um, and it's, it's been kind of fun to watch, watch our two styles now that we work together on a lot of projects um, since we started via artisans. I've taken everything that, that he taught me and I've added to it. Um, and, and he's, pro he's progressed a whole lot in his work woodworking as well over the same years that I wasn't around to watch him. So it's been a really unique dynamic, but that's how I got back into woodworking and started taking on more and more challenging projects, um, to build more and more things around my house and things other people would, uh, would ask me to build for them over the last five years has become a little bit more than just a hobby. So it became something that I decided, you know, this isn't just a phase of my life. I'm not just going to be a, you know, a good enough woodworker to build a couple cabinets I need around the house. I came to the realization that this was something that, you know, I was talented at, I had a gift for, I'm by far, you know, by no means am I the best in the world at, but, it became one of those things in life where I think I'm going to dedicate my life to this. I kind of, I, if I look down the road, I can see myself 30, 40 years from now, still, you know, waking up on a Saturday morning and going out to the workbench with a cup of coffee. Um, what's the next major thing in life? You know, we had, I had just finished school. I was working a relatively new job. We were trying to transition her out of her, her role as a executive director for a nonprofit here in the area, just so that she could be home um, more for our, at that time, he was about one years old, our son. So we wanted her to stay home, trying to come up with a way to make a little bit extra cash. So the idea of, well, let's sell some things on Etsy. My wife, Molly, she, she kicked it all off with the, the just implanting this little idea of, 
well, you know, have you ever thought about selling your craftsmanship essentially, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and using it for some financial income. And, and I had never, I had never aspired to be a business owner ever in my life. I, I always thought that was one of those things that is just reserved for those people who are just a little bit, have it a little bit more together than I do. <laughs> um, but, the, you know, she implanted that idea and it was a seed and it just started growing and growing and, and it, you know, it, it turned into this thing we now call Via Artisans. But at the time, you know, Via Artisans wasn't, it, it wasn't something that I came up with like five years ago and it's been, it's been, you know, lingering there and I've been dreaming about it. This came up just kind of, kind of out of the blue. You know, it started with the idea of, well, maybe you could sell a few things to help with some spending money. And then it turned into, well, I think we can do better than just selling on Etsy. You know, we, we could build a website. Well, and then, well, if we're going to have a website, we're going to need some content to, to bring in customers. So we, we need a blog, too. And well, if we're going to have a blog, you know, let's we might as well, you know, have our own shop. And if we're going to make stuff online, we're going to have a different product lines. And if we're going to have different product lines, you know, um, we need custom it, projects. Before you, what? It, you, before you knew it, you were like, wait a minute, this looks a lot like a business. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was sitting at work one day and it just kind of hit me all of a sudden that you, you're capable of doing this. And, you know, I, I've always been a very self-critical person. And so that's something that, uh, that I've been working on a lot over the, over, especially the last five years, you know, and I had some experiences and toward the end of my military service that turned me into a, a, a very introspective person. Mm -hmm. And then working at a previous group, I got to, to work on some projects that, you know, we, we dealt with character development and leadership, all of these, all of these things kind of, if you put them together, you know, from it's, it's all disparate, but when you put them together, it all started to make sense. And so I was sitting at work one day and I realized that everything that I had dreamed up in my head was something that I had, was a skill or something I've done in the past that I picked up. And I realized that the idea that I came up with on my own was uh, a combination of all these little parts that now fit together into a potentially cohesive business. And it was so exciting when I finally realized that. And so, and it was really exciting because, you know, it, it just, this idea almost came overnight. You know, I, um, I want to go and, back really quick and I want to touch on something you said about uh, the way you describe your father and his woodworking the kind of guy who created something out of nothing. And really, when you think about it, that is the core of entrepreneurship is that we're taking a nothing. We're taking an idea. Uh, sometimes we don't even have the idea. It's a concept or a passion. In your case, it was woodworking. And that drives the next step and the next step and the next step. And like you said, you realize like, wow, I own a business. Like I have a website and there's a blog and I'm selling things to people. I'm creating something. I'm creating something out of nothing. No one in my, I don't come from a family of entrepreneurs. Um, you know, like I said, my father was a, was an auto mechanic and my mother was a school teacher. My grandfather, um, one of my grandfathers worked for the railroad. Um, my other grandfather worked for um, the state of Texas after, after World War II. Um, I've got a military history in my family, but there's really no significant entrepreneurial history in my family. So that I don't, I didn't have any, I think that's part of the reason why when I was growing up and even into my early, well, up until about a year ago, I, I never really even considered that I was, you know, entrepreneurship was not something I thought was that I was capable of doing. Honestly, I thought, I thought there was some sort of secret sauce mm -hmm. that somebody had to show you, you know, behind the curtain and I was not allowed back there. And, I, I and all these people a, who, yeah. who had, 
who had the the courage to go do that somehow s- had some sort of secret that nobody else does and and that you know obviously <laughs> That's a common thought, though. I mean, I thought this it was is. Thing. Yeah, I used to think yeah. the same thing that business owners knew something that I didn't, uh, and right. that's what gave them the ability to create a business. Uh, yeah, and I, I know, I know. Right now, there is somebody listening to this that feels that way, and that's why they're not pushing the button to start their business right now. Yeah, I know it. Well, and, you know, um, it, it needs to, I, I think that unless entrepreneurship in and itself is your goal, you know, it needs to become, it needs to come about organically. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I think it's fine. And like, let's just say, for example, my son, when he's, when he gets out of college one day and, and he decides, I, I want to pursue entrepreneurship just for entrepreneurship's sake. Right. So, I, I mean, Maybe I don't have the idea yet, but I know that entrepreneurship is the way of life that I want to live. So I, I I can appreciate that. But if that's not your goal, it's best not to force it. <laughs> right. And so and, and that's why I think that via artisans has that's that's why it's so easy to dedicate the time and the resources and the risks that I have taken that's why I'm okay with that because I, I know that I didn't force it from the beginning. I'm not forcing it now. I'm kind of taking it as it comes. And yeah, you found and there's some other aspects to that that we can get into yeah. later when we talk about the makeup of the business. But well, it, it sounds like you found your passion. I mean, without well, passion for something, you're never going to, you're always going to look at the cost of the yeah. endeavor Instead of looking at the benefits and when it's something that you love doing, you don't count the cost. You just, you just do it, you know? Yeah. You, you find the resources to do it. You find the resources yeah. to do it. And what's really cool about what you just said, and you hit on some seriously great points, uh, your self introspection. I think that's one of the, the, the key tenets of entrepreneurship. And I know I, I, I'm going to go back to Gary Vaynerchuk and if you've – anybody that's been watching the show consistently knows that I constantly bring him up. But one of the things that Gary Vaynerchuk mentions uh, as being a, a an important piece of entrepreneurship is first, know who you are. You have to know what you're all about. And it's funny because you worked in an environment where you were learning about who you were through – you know, I remember at at at, uh, at the previous group – those questionnaires, the personality tests, the the different products we're launching in leadership, you don't launch those things without asking yourself some of those questions. So you went through a right. process of discovering things about who Brad Clark is and what he's all about. And like right. you said, it all came to a head one point and you were like, wait a minute. Yeah, no, I mean, working at previous group, I got a master's class in self-awareness. Me too. I mean <laughs> – and I think everyone who worked at that company did. And, you know, there's how many, just look at it this way. How many, myself, um, Jamie, Godori, yep. um, Mike Allred, and you. So that's four businesses. That's true. That have come wow. within the last year and a half out of, out of that group. And I'm, that's not counting everyone else that you you know that that, that was part of that group. I, I I'm sure that there's more. That's so funny. I never stopped to think about what came out of that company were yeah. people with an entrepreneurial hunger. Right. Wow. That's well, and at the time, so you know, I wouldn't have told you that I, I want to start a business. I, I either. But there were some seeds planted there for sure. Yeah. Going to get an MBA helped give me. I, I think in getting that MBA gave me a little bit more confidence um, than I would would have had without it because, you know, I was going through that the program and, you know, okay, here we go. Here's our managerial accounting class. This is really going to be hard for me because I don't know anything about accounting. Well, you get into the class and you realize this is easy. I get, I mean, well, it's not easy, but yeah, I can do this. Yeah, it's, they're going to teach you how to do it. Yeah. Or, you know, or you teach yourself. I mean, and so – Realizing that there's no secret sauce, right. right? There's no special, there's, there's no special club you have to be in 
to be willing to take a risk, um, to follow a passion or to start something from scratch. Um, you know, that was a big confidence boost for me. And then I looked back at all of these, you know, seemingly disparate or disconnected skill sets that I had picked up from being in the infantry, working in agri, because I, I did work for a number of years with the USDA and, what I, and I worked lots of different jobs. I, you know, um, when I was in high school, I started I started my own company when I was in high school. It wasn't really a company. It was an airplane washing service, but it was unique. I, I recognized the market that was lacking in a service. So you were an and entrepreneur. I was, and I just didn't realize it, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's somewhere along the way I decided, you know, that I just couldn't do that. But yeah, I can, and I am. And so it's, the seed um, has always been there. You just need a time for that thing to grow. Yeah, I needed time. I needed some experience. Yeah. I would say I needed failure. Um, I needed failure and I did fail. Yeah. And then the other thing I needed was I needed the right idea that was that I was passionate about enough and that was feasible enough to sustain. I could have come up with an idea that was that I was only passionate about. But if I didn't think critically on it, um you know, it, it it could have just been a flash in the pan kind of idea. And, and I would have gotten down the road and realized, well, I may be passionate about this, but it's it's not really all that realistic. Mm -hmm. um, but what I did was I took the time to come up with something that I was passionate about. And then I had, I had the, the ability um, to really think critically on it and to mull it over and and Molly and I hashed out the idea over months and months. Um, but our um, vision is that Via Artisans is a company that is devoted to bringing craftsmanship and artisan work back into the American home. And that's the overall, that's the overarching vision of Via Artisans. Via um, stands, you know, in Latin, it means um, a, the road or a journey or the way to. And in English, you know, via is used, you know, as a as a um, shorthand for brought to you by or of. And so the idea is, is that when we give you a product from via artisans, you're getting something brought to you by an artisan. So the idea of artisan is countercultural to what we see when we go to Walmart, what we see when honestly when we go to Pottery Barn, because we live in a world where even our furniture, stuff that is in our home that we buy with the expectation of it being there for years, frankly, is disposable. Um, you know, news. people, that's one of the reasons why people go to antique stores and pay top dollar for a hundred year old chest, because you have the stuff that was made a long time ago. It was made by an artisan. It was made by a craftsman. And it holds its value and it's got all of these memories and years of experience that you can look at it and see its uniqueness. And you go into Pottery Barn or Restoration Hardware or Target and you see something that's put together. It's it's made out of all kinds of products that really aren't wood, <laughs> but they spend a whole lot of money to make it look like wood. And it at the end of the day, it's not something that you can pass on to your grandchildren or even your children for that matter. Um, it may serve a purpose now, but honestly, you know, no one going to Ikea, you know, as much as I admire what they've done as a business and what they've done to bring furniture, affordable furniture to people, no one goes to Ikea saying, Oh, I can't wait to get this dining table and put it together. And, you know, watch it become part of my, my home and my family because no one really thinks it's going to last that long. It's, it's going to serve its purpose until it doesn't. And it's going to break one day and you're just going to go buy a new one. It's almost like a punchline now. It's like, how long is this going to last? Right. Yeah. Via artisans is not just, it's not just about woodworking. The larger vision is that we can take anything that falls in that artisan um, realm. So metalworking, leatherworking, pottery, um, the culinary arts. So we chose via artisans because 
we think that one of these days we can expand it beyond personal skill set, which is, you know, woodworking and, and furniture making. But everything that we make has to have a, a purpose. It needs to solve a problem. It needs to be something that has an everyday use. You know, everything we make is designed to be used and it's made to a certain quality that you can use it every day for a lot of days, you know, for, for years and years and years. So our cutting boards, you know, if, if you take care of the cutting board that we make, your great, great grandchildren could be using it and just think what that might mean to them 50, a hundred years from now for someone to be chopping vegetables and on this board that has a story, you know, that, that has been in their family for so many years Um, that's kind of the idea, the emotional value that we offer to our customers. So it sounds like what you're selling is legacy. That's a big part of it. Yeah. That's really, really interesting. How often do you get to purchase the genesis of legacy? Something that you, you can pass on. That's right. You're not buying that at Ikea. You're not. No. And, and frankly, um, there's not a whole lot of things that we buy these days that are like that. You know, recently um, we sold my grandparents home and so all of their furniture, you know, we, we did a estate sale and uh, you know, me and my brothers were fighting over a cast iron skillet. Why? Not because we couldn't go out and buy a cast iron skillet, but because that cast iron skillet is the one that we ate eggs out of and hash browns and watched our grandmother um, grill up hamburgers for our entire lives. And that, that skillet's been around for, I don't know how old the skillet is. It might be, it might be, you know, a hundred years old by this point, or at least 50 years old. But yeah, I mean, there's a value in that. And to the right customer, they can see that. And so, um, you know, furniture is, is one of those furniture is, is not quite a commodity. Um, certain types of furniture, I guess, are, I mean, you know, everybody needs a table. Everybody needs something to put your TV on. There's certain things that are, it's a, it's a commodity business, but there's different markets within the furniture world. Just for example, of, of, you know, what people are willing to spend their money on and what they want. Do they want something unique? Um, and design these days is, is a really big thing. You know, everyone who owns a home and especially if they're married or have a family, the wife's looking through, you know, they're looking at Pinterest every day and they look, they go to the grocery store and they see um, home and garden and Southern living. And they have these, these beautiful, vivid examples of what your home should look like. Right. And so, there's all of these influencers telling us what our homes should be. And then you have to go out and, and buy all the stuff to create that vision for your own home. Well, and often what happens is people end up buying cheap stuff, but what we end up doing is making all of these um, fake settings in our homes because it looks like what we think it needs to look like. And what we're saying at Via Artisans is we can help you accomplish that, but it's going to be the real thing. It's not going to be made to look like the real thing. It's going to be that thing that you want. If if you want a farmhouse dining table, we're going to give it to you, but it's not going to be made to look like a farmhouse table. It is going to be a farmhouse table. It's going to be solid wood. It's going to be put together like it would have been made a hundred years ago. And that thing is going to be around as long as you want, as long as you don't drop it from the, you know, the fifth floor of your building, it's going to be there for you. Um, And so I guess the value that we offer is that when you, when you order something from Via Artisans, what you're spending your money on is craftsmanship, the quality of the materials and your emotional stake in the legacy of that piece within your family. That's really, and uh, that's awesome. so that, that's what we try to do because we, we literally pour our heart into 
building something for someone else. That's where my passion comes in. How receptive has, have the people that you've talked to about what it is that via artisans represents, how, how receptive are they? Because like you said, we live in a world of Ikea. We live in a world of Allen wrench, uh, built front rooms. Right. And, and when you look at a, uh, I don't know, a $50, $50 particle board table, that's supposed to look like a farmhouse table versus I'm sure, you know, your farmhouse table is not going to be $50 because, I mean, we're talking right. about the, you know, the labor, the craftsmanship. Right. You know, how, how have you dealt with confronting those, that, that dichotomy of, of cost and value? Well, honestly, that's something we need to improve on. It's something we haven't done as much as I'd like to. I think that, uh, we started to do that with some of our products um, on the blog. So we've got some blog posts uh, up that are uh, the cutting. One of the cutting board posts comes to mind. So in that cutting, in that post, I we My offer we post, sell. By the way, oh well, thank you. Yeah, that uh, was really cool. Yeah, I thought it was too long, but I'm no. glad you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> So we offer lots. We I don't know. I think we have maybe five different types, of, four or five different types of cutting boards right now that we sell. Is hey, these are kind of standard products, and and we make we make lots of cutting uh, custom ones as well. So I thought, well, you know, you can go to Bed Bath and Beyond, and you can you can find a fourteen by eighteen, you know, inch cutting board for forty dollars. So why would a customer come and buy mine that costs $60 or $70? Um, I need to communicate what the difference in value is between mine and, and my competitors. And that's really just, I mean, that's business 101. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up that particular blog. I know nothing about woodworking, bro. Nothing. I, that's you okay. Know, I, you don't I, need to. Most people, I, th- I don't think most people do. I, I think that we've we've come to a point with the cheap stuff that we stopped caring about understanding what it is that's around us. What is the wood that we use? What's what wood is good for what purposes? When I went to your website and I went to that blog, I read it intently. I mean, I was genuinely interested in this blog because it was telling me something about an item in my house that I've seen and used hundreds of times. But yeah. now I'm realizing I didn't know anything about something as simple as a cutting board, like the way that the grain is going and and why you want it to look this way, which depending on what you're going to be cutting on it, this is the way you yeah. want it to be. I educated myself on that and I realized – I'm not even kidding, man. As soon as I was done reading that, I was I went back – because I'm, I'm reading this on my phone and I got wrapped – I was at dinner. I was wrapped up in this art in this in this blog. And then people started talking to me and I look at the guy next to me like, bro, did you know that cutting boards come in like these different types? I never knew. He's like, what are you even talking about? Yeah. But, but you, but, but it got me, it got me psyched up because I now know this. And then I went to the next blog and the next blog, I liked your education of the general public. I think it's going to have a lot to do with conveying that value with conveying the, Hey, yes, you can go purchase the $40 bed, bath and beyond plastic. Here's what you don't know. And here's why this is so amazing and why you need it in your home. And I was like, dude, I need to get one of these. Yeah. And you know, we have so much stuff Mm -hmm. in our, in our homes right now. There's a vet who might be listening to this in their car, driving to work, doing that nine to five. What's your advice? to that veteran artisan who wants to break out, but not sure how. Well, I would say, I would say come up with a plan before you, before you assume any risk or make any firm decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, Because like like I said before, my personal perspective is that passion is good. Passion is an awesome motivator, um, but passion is not enough by itself. Um, and so I had talked about earlier, I mentioned that I, you know, this was something I was passionate about, but I also 
made sure I took the time to think critically about it and, and vet it as an idea long term. So my where we're at right now is I still have, you know, my eight to five job. Molly, we were able to get Molly home. Uh, so Molly doesn't work full time. She still does um, consulting work on the side. So, you know, I I wasn't able to just risk my mortgage for all of this. Right. Um, and you shouldn't. I mean, that's that's not a smart no. idea. I think no, you know, well, I, I, the reason I'm you, saying that is because you, I'm telling you, I've heard vet entrepreneurs or people that want to become entrepreneurs say that the only thing that's holding me back is this nine to five. And I'm like, you need to keep that nine to five. <laughs> it yeah. It needs to be part of your plan. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, um, especially if you come from the military and especially if you're in any kind of leadership, you should understand the risk analysis, you know, uh, measured risk, you know, what, what is worth the risk and what is not. And, and you need to apply that to your life. I, I, I think that if I, I could have easily just, um, I could have easily just gone off and started a website and started a company and called it Brad's furniture company. Right. And honestly, I might have, actually, I would probably be more profitable than I am right now. The problem, though, is what I what I've built right now is I've built it for the long term. I've built it with the long with a long term um, play in mind. And if I just ran off and said, oh, I'm just going to follow my passion and I'm going to start this furniture company, I'm just going to start cranking out pieces of furniture. Yeah, I might be more profitable than I am right now. But at some point, passion is that passion is going to run out. And I'm if I didn't take the time to build in the uh the mechanics of it and the processes and you know if i if i didn't build it for the long game it's it's going to sputter out eventually so what's in the horizon for via artisans well i think in the horizon you know the logical next step in growth for the company is a that i can spend more time at it and there's some other things you know you know, the, the eight to five job, I, I don't see me leaving that anytime soon. Um, there's some milestones that the company that via artisans needs to hit before I can feel comfortable doing that. Now, I, there's a whole lot of things I can do. There's still a lot of capacity in just the, you know, 25 to 30 hours I put in it on generally a weekly basis. There's still some more capacities of what I could do there. And so that needs to be, you know, growing the blog is is going to be really vital. Um, growing the capacity of our um, our output capacity, so being able to do more and more projects mm -hmm. in a shorter amount of time. And so that's why we set up the the online standard orders. So like our our smaller items that are easily shipped, cutting boards, serving trays, um, that sort of thing. Those are items that I can get in the shop and I can make in batches, you know, small batches, but I may make 30 cutting boards at a time. And then I set them off on the shelf and, you know, it becomes inventory. Uh, a lot of our work, in fact, most of our work is uh, custom, custom jobs where I sit down with the customer. I come up with a design just for them based on what they want. And I build it to their exact specifications um, some of my own recommendations are built in there, it's finished exactly how they want, and then it's delivered. So it's a complete, it's almost, uh, if you, you're familiar with the term bespoke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like a bespoke, complete, um, you know, start to finish um, service. And so that kind of been the, the uh, what has taken up almost all of my time. But I need to find more time to do things with the blog, to grow our, our online presence, um, to reach out and to sell more of those standard products like those cutting boards or serving trays um, and the tables. Honestly, I've developed a system where we've got a couple different designs of the tables and you can order those. They're semi custom and you can pick a color and you can choose a, a size or specify the size you want but I'm not reinventing that table every time I build it. So that is my plan for growing the company 
um, when I don't, you know, I can't dedicate 70 hours a week to it. Right. Um, because those are kind of the, you know, the smart plays in terms of how do we grow revenue, increase our customer base without, you know, a 100% increase in our time commitment. That makes sense. That makes yeah. Sense. Well, Brad, I want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with me today about uh, Via Artisans. I, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think that you have a remarkable website. It's beautiful. I love what you guys are doing with these blogs and the the level of craftsmanship that I see in your product line is unreal. Just unreal, man. Thank you for that. We, we put a lot of work into it. The website is all, all, you can thank my wife for that. She's the, um, uh, what's the right word? She's the lady with all the good taste because well, she's the, yeah, really she's got great taste. I was, I was going to say she's the artisan essentially yeah. behind, behind how all that came together. Oh man. It, it looks, so. it looks amazing. I was, uh, definitely, you made me look at my own website like, ah, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I felt really crummy. I, I used to be really proud of it because I was like, ah, I built it myself. And then I looked at yours. I was like, oh, dude, I, well, built, I built garbage. <laughs> well, th then you know how I feel every time I go on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I follow all these other woodworkers and I'm like, golly, that, you know, that's incredible. But hey, man, um, we're, we're on our own grind and, and that's it's ours, you know, and that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, yeah. all right, man, but Hey, thanks again for everything. And, uh, you know what? I will definitely be in touch with you again and I'd love to do a follow up. Yeah, I'd love to. Anytime you want me on, man. I, uh, I enjoy this. I love talking about it. Awesome. Um, I spend a lot of time in the shop running a sander alone with my thoughts. Mm. So <laughs> anytime you get to I'll share them, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> all right, Hold brother. I'll talk, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thanks, man. All right, that was episode 25, 25 episodes. That's crazy. Uh, episode one started uh, at my at my dinner table. Uh, I bought my first mic on Craigslist from a crackhead in Colleen, Texas. It went from a Yeti mic, a very old and, and barely functional laptop, to a MacBook. And this, this wonderful uh, uh, microphone and arms and, and the all the equipment that comes with it. I am truly inspired by every one of my guests. And I'm always inspired by the people that reach out to me and say, thank you for having the show. I learned something from this. This is not the sexiest show on the planet. Look, entrepreneurship is cool to think about. It's it's cool to, to, to listen to. You know, these gurus have millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, the Gary Vaynerchuk's, the Tim Ferriss's, the the Tony Robbins, that's really cool because you see them, you know, with their planes and you think, wow, I could do that too. I don't have the answers. I, uh, I never, I've never professed to have the answers. I am on this journey with you too. I, I've never run a podcast. In fact, uh, 25 episodes down the road and I've made a whopping total. I'm not even BSing you here. $15. Well, you know what? I, I'm not really selling anything. I have, I have a, a page on the website where you can purchase some of the books through Amazon and I get a little something, something for Amazon as an associate, as an affiliate. My goal has always been to make this show about you, about entrepreneurs, about uh, educating, inspiring, and promoting veterans and their entrepreneurship. Thank you for, for you know being here with me on the 25th episode. For me, that's a huge milestone. Let's see 50, let's see 100. Uh, continue to uh, just, just support the show, support each other, like, listen, subscribe, and share uh, this episode and all the other episodes that are on YouTube. Um, don't forget, it, 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 we're not just on YouTube. It's not just a, a video show like now. Uh, everything gets put into audio, so you can. It's a podcast. That's it's the After Action Review podcast. So you can listen to this at the gym. You can listen to this in your car. You can listen to this. Uh, while you're cleaning. One of my favorite things to do is to put on a podcast and go grocery shopping. So there's a tip. If you are going to grocery shopping, you hate it, and you don't want to hear the da -da 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 crap that they play on the intercom, put your headphones on. 
and listen to the After Action Review podcast. Listen to Gary Vaynerchuk podcast. Listen to Tim Ferriss podcast. There's some really other cool podcasts out there that I want to share with you. Uh, there's going to be a separate episode. It's not going to be an interview show, but uh, definitely want to share with you some of uh, the podcasts that I listen to and why I like to listen to them. And they're not all about entrepreneurship. Some of them are entertaining. Uh, you got to balance that out, man. You got to have some entertainment in your life. A little sugar with with uh, with your vegetables. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a little fruit with your vegetables. So that's it. Episode 25, Brad Clark. What an amazing guy. I want to thank him again for uh, taking time to be on the show. Guys, check out that website. Check it out. It's beautiful, man. I, I want my website to look like that. That's the freaking standard for a website. And their blogs, absolutely amazing. Their videos, fantastic. I, I look at Brad and what he's doing. I'm like, ah, that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to be on that level. That does it. Episode 25 is coming on. Looking forward uh, to the future. Episode 26 is on its way. And I will see you there at episode 26. Oh, crap. Before I go, hey. Make sure you subscribe right there. Click on my face, subscribe to the YouTube, uh, YouTube channel.